After last February's devastating winter storm down in Texas, a storm that took out Texas's power grid and also caused 4.5 million Texans to lose power in their homes. And it caused Ted Cruz to run off to Cancun, by the way. Um, we're seeing this potentially happen all over again. But so now with that being said, there was things that they tried to put in place that they said they were putting in place to change things. And with that kind of confidence, Governor Greg Abbott had this to say. Can you give right, a guarantee that the lights are gonna stay on? I can guarantee the lights will stay on. He can guarantee that the lights would stay on. Uh, flash forward to just a couple days ago, how is that guarantee going? No one can guarantee that there won't be a quote uh, load shed event. Uh, but uh, what we will work and strive to achieve and what we're prepared to achieve uh, is that the power is going to stay on across the entire state. What we're going to strive to achieve is that the power is going to stay on throughout the state. Now, usually if there's something like that said, my next thought is how? Now, by the way, he talked about that load shed event. In case you guys don't know what that is, Washington Post pointed out here. A load shed occurs when electricity demand above available supply results in rolling blackouts to keep the state power grid from collapsing. Load shedding happened on a large scale in the last state, uh, in, in the state last year, and then that's what caused all the problems. Caused 246 fatalities there, and many of those people just simply froze to death. It was a devastating event. It's why Ted Cruz got into all the uh, the drama that he got caught up in in running away with his family to Cancun for warmer temperatures. So, um, why is this sudden shift happened from Governor Abbott? You might wonder, Washington Post continues on. Abbott, who initially blamed the wind turbines that had frozen in the extreme cold for the power's grid failure, before acknowledging that they played no role, called for ERCOT to be overhauled after the storm. Sounds like good news. So you calling for ERCOT to 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 uh, to change rules and maybe some something actionable will be, will be done so that this doesn't happen again. But even after the storm, Texas lawmakers did not require natural gas companies to prepare their equipment for the extreme cold ahead of this winter. Some have cautioned that although the electrical grid is better equipped for winter storms, the natural gas side of Texas's energy system could freeze in extreme conditions and potentially strain the entire system. It's like fixing your car, but the tank is empty is what Michael Weber, who's an energy resources professor at the University of Texas at Austin, that Lib University, told the Post last month. So again, just to recap, he said it was gonna change things to make sure this happened. They signed, I guess, legislation, executive orders. We're gonna change things, but they didn't hold the energy companies accountable to actually do those changes. What this was, so first off, it started off just with the guarantee. I watched a lot of sports, I was a former athlete. What Generally, what they tell you not to do for PR purposes is not to guarantee anything. And once you guarantee something, that becomes bulletin board material for your opponents. It becomes something that motivates someone else to play better and maybe prove you wrong. This is different, this is politics. If you guarantee something, you have the power to actually implement policies and initiatives, maybe force things to a certain direction. Not just Governor Abbott, but also the entire state legislature that are supposed to do things to fulfill that guarantee. This should be a little bit easier. At least if you're playing basketball, you can't completely guarantee that the guy across me isn't gonna catch fire and score 45 points in a night because he's just feeling it. Who's the opposition in politics? The opposition in politics are people that are trying to exploit your weaknesses, point out where you've gone wrong, and then say they're better for the job. A way to avoid having that done is to do what you said. And that's just not being done here. <sighs> so what have they been doing there in Texas since he made this guarantee and since he didn't enforce or make sure that, the, that these companies, energy companies did what he said he wanted them to do. Let's look at this, the entire legislator down there in Texas. The legislator has prioritized bills that allow any adult in the state to carry a handgun without a license or permit. And that and then also that bans abortions after six weeks. That doesn't have much to do with um, this power grid. Okay, fine, they do multiple things through the state. That's okay, fine. They're worried about people openly caring more and also limiting women's rights to choose. Also. It's now on track to enact one of the most restrictive voting laws in the country after an effort that has literally rendered the legislator unable to govern. And this is a recap quickly on how the Democrats left the state in order to keep them from implementing those laws. And then the Republican House Speaker didn't offer any, any offer to negotiate on any policy compromises. And it basically froze up what they were gonna do because they were focusing on the Democrats who ran from the state. 
One more piece about what they've been doing down there in Texas after this guarantee, or maybe it was before, it doesn't matter, he wasn't paying attention. He's also waded into battles with the Biden administration over the US-Mexico border, setting off a misleading quest to construct a wall of his own with taxpayer funds that he'll use for uh, for the effort, if they're enough, for only a few miles of the wall. So this wall even that he said, isn't really gonna work. And he falsely claimed that migrants are behind COVID-19 surges. And as the Delta variant is infecting almost 12,000 Texans a day in reported cases, he's also refused to reinstate mask mandates at the state level and ban local governments from doing so, sued those that defied him. This is what he's been working on. This is what the Texas, the, the Republicans that are controlling at the state level have been working on. So this isn't just Governor Abbott, this is what they work on. After saying, I guarantee that the power is not gonna go out again. Now maybe he's gonna get lucky and the power won't go out again because again, this part is out of his control. We don't know the level of the storm that could happen. Even in this one that's supposed to have started yesterday. It's still winter, maybe it's next week, maybe it's the week after that. It doesn't matter, you don't have to be able to predict what the weather will do to do things to protect your citizens from devastating issues like this. Or if you want, to protect Ted Cruz so he doesn't get himself caught up in another dramatic situation. Whatever motivations you have to protect people, I've discovered that what they want to do when they talk about life, they use it for political purposes, they use it for reelection purposes, they use it for these fights against who they call the evil folks who don't pay attention or don't care for Americans' lives. 246 of them died last year, froze to death. Are those lives matter? Were they just being born? Or were they in, in, in uterus still? So this comes back to this, every time they talk about life and you see them not protect life that's here, understand that they don't care about either one of those lives. They're looking to get reelected. And he gets donors, his donor base is specifically and largely energy companies. Who did he not tell to do what he said he would do? Energy companies. Now, after all this, he's still pushing these things like the election things, uh, just to be on the good side of Donald Trump. Now, he showed up at Donald Trump's rally uh, last week, last weekend in Texas, and let's see how that worked out for him, kissing Donald Trump's butt. Please welcome, welcome the, the governor, governor of the, of the great, great state, state of Texas. Texas. How's that working out for you, Greg? Not very well. Oh, maybe he's gonna survive the primaries. Maybe he's gonna survive the general election, but we'll see. <laughs> right now, we'll see how many Texans survive the next wave of his incompetence. And not even incompetence, just, just doesn't care. That's not who paid him, bottom line.